One of the most popular perspective in games is the first person perspective. Usually beginners tend to create it using blueprints, but that's not the right way to approach it since the necessary nodes act like give and take. Luckily, making it in C++ is just as easy and in this tutorial we will learn how to create a solid FPS controller in C++. For starters, let's see what input is and how it works. There are two types of inputs in UA4, keybinds and axis binds. Keybinds are used for actions such as interactions, opening doors and whatnot. They have two events bound to the input event, on pressed and on released. Both are just as important, but usually you'll find yourself using on pressed more often than on released. Axis binds are used for moving the character and the camera orientation. Usually an axis has two values, 1 and minus 1, 0 being the neutral value when nothing happens. An example of an axis bond is moving left and right, the buttons used for this are usually A with a value of minus 1 and D with a value of 1. With these values then we can tell the engine hey I want my character to move. Now that we understand the input let's open an empty project of UE4, the project that I will open is almost empty, the only thing that I'll be using and isn't made in this tutorial is the most basic character type, a capital component and a camera component. Although that's not the reason why we are here I'm going to show you how to create that as it's really easy. So here I am in Unreal Engine 4, the version of my project is running is 4.22 but the code is going to work on lower and higher versions as well. Here is my character, as I said very basic, the only thing that I created is the camera component and then I also changed the size of the capsule component through C++. Ok, let's close this down and let me show you the code. For the camera, as usual, you property and then class your camera component, camera component Keep in mind this is a pointer and you also have to include the header for the camera component. Then in the C++ file what I did was to create the full sub object, your camera component, name it first person camera, attach it to the capsule component, set the relative location so it's somewhere at head level and then set use pawn control rotation to true just as I would in blueprints. And then for the size of the capsule component here I have 55 and six, uh, 96. And these are the values from the first person template. So this is basically a very basic character as I said. And now what we'll have to do is to see how we can create input for both moving the mouse and moving the character with WASD but also basic input when pressing a key. Let's start this tutorial by going at the top of the header file above U class and type class U input component. This is very important as we are going to use it just in a second. Before doing that, let's go to protected and in here we will need to create two new voids. But before doing that, let me explain why we are going to use protected. That is because we don't want other classes to be able to access any of these voids. So the first one is going to be called move forward and it is going to have an input called value. The input is going to be a float. I'm going to make it shorter by typing val. Let's copy this, but instead of move forward, we are going to have move right. Okay, now let's override an already existent function by typing virtual virtual void setup player input component with an argument u input component, it being a reference to input component, and at the end we will need a very important keyword called override which is going to allow us to set this up in the C++ file. Alright, now that we finally wrote all of them, if you're using Visual Studio you might notice this green line. What does this mean? It means that we haven't set them up in the C++ file. So first we're going to take care of virtual void setup player input component. So we can copy all of this here, copy, paste it down here. Now we will need to add some things, for example in the arguments here we are going to add class and then for the input component we are going to add player right here, so player input component, the name is just overall better and we understand better what it means. Ok, this being a function from the header file what you'll have to do is to type a and the name of the class for me being a basic character and then column column. Now this is going to turn red, that is because we need to get curly brackets and now everything is fine. The next thing that we have to do is a check and we are going to check for player input component and semicolon at the end. What, the, what this does? Well, 
it is going to check if player input component is valid, if it's not it's going to stop the entire function and it's going to allow us to avoid errors and problems. Okay, currently we can start setting up inputs, but before doing that we will need to go in edit, project settings, go to input and now let's go to axis mappings and create two new axis mappings. The first one is going to be called turn and the other one is going to be called look up. Okay, the turn is going to be bound to mouse X and the lookup is going to be bound to mouse Y. And their names are pretty self-explanatory. This one is going to be used to turn around left, right and look up to look up and down. Okay, now let's see how we set up bindings to the mouse. We will need to get player input component then we will need to bind axis. Okay, here we will need to type the name of the axis we want to bind. So let's go to look up. Then we're going to have a comma. Now here we will have to type this. And the second argument is the user class. So the class is going to be a basic character. And then we are, we are going to use a function from a pawn. So ampersand a pawn. And the function that we will use is add controller pitch input and some icon at the end and now usually when you write a function you will have to add parentheses at the end not in our case the argument is going to be uh, sent automatically by the bind axis and here this is going to be read don't mind it it's just an intellisense error okay now we can go in our Neon engine 4 and compile and let's see what is going to happen Keep in mind that if you go to edit, project settings and back to input, there is going to be this thing here called scale. This is very important and I'm going to show you why in a second. It compiled, let's play. And if I'm going to move up and down, my mouse is also going to move. Uh, the camera is going to move. But currently when I uh, look upwards, when I want to look upwards, the camera is going, to, is going downwards and opposite. So when I go downwards, camera goes upwards. That is because exactly of the scale. If I'm going to set the scale to minus one, and I'm going to play, when I'm going to go upwards, it's going to go up, and when I'm going to go downwards, it's going to go down. And this is exactly what we want to happen. Let's close this down. We can copy this line, paste it instead of look up, turn, and instead of add controller pitch input, we can change this to yo. Let's go back, close this down, compile, and now we should be able to move to the left and to the right with our mouse. And soon we are going to also add movement on W, A, S, and D, so the player can move. Let's see. And as you can see now, I can move however I want with my mouse. And the scale for turn is right. When I go to the left, the camera goes to the left. When I go to the right, the camera goes to the right. Now for WASD, we will have to go back in Unreal Engine 4, Edit, Project Settings, Input, and again we will have to add some axes. The first one is going to be called Forward, Bound to W, and we will have to create a new button, Bound to S. Okay, but the scale for this one is going to be minus 1. The second axis mapping is going to be called the right. Okay. We will have to get again to buttons, one bound to A and one to D. Okay, and the scale for A is going to be minus one. Close this down. Let's go back in Unreal Engine 4. We can comment this and we can call this mouse axis binding. Okay, now let's once again get player input component. Then we are going to bind axis again. This time the name is going to be called forward. Again, for the user class, we are going to get this. And once again, we are going to get a function from the header file. And this one is going to be called the move, move forward, the one that we just created. So ampersand, a basic character, column, column, move forward. Okay, again, no need or any inputs, we can copy this instead of forward, put right, and instead of move right, move forward, we will get move right. Once again, no need for inputs. Okay, and now let's start setting up these two voids. So void 
a basic character and I'm going to have move forward then don't forget about the arguments float fell and then brackets curly brackets copy this and instead of move forward move right all right so now that we got these two functions down let's see how we are going to set them up so first thing that we want to do is to make sure that value is different than zero so if val different than zero then we're going to go on and do something and what we'll do is to add movement input okay and here we will need to have a world direction which is a vector and a scale value the world direction is going to be get actor forward vector because we want to go forward and then the scale value is going to be value and a semicolon at the end you can copy this you can actually copy the entire thing all right add movement input instead of forward vector you're going to get actor right vector with value being the float value okay Let's close it down and compile and let's see what we are going to achieve. After compiling the code successfully, now I'm going to be able to move through the scene, left, right, forward, backward and move my mouse at the same time. Now we are almost done with this tutorial, but we still have something I want to teach you. And that is action mappings. That's another part of inputs. Let's go to action mappings, create a new one and I'm going to call this simple action. I'm going to bind this to the E button and this is basically your usual jumping system or opening doors or collecting an interactable item and whatever else there is on which you have to press buttons. Let's go in Visual Studio, let's go to the C++ file and in here above the player input component bind axis forward I'm going to have player input component arrow operator bind action this time so not bind axis but bind action okay the name is going to be simple action then we're going to have a comma and now very important what you have to do here is to type i e underline pressed so this means that we are going to call a function when we first press e then we are going to have this for the user class and then we're going to have a function let's say from a basic character we are going to have simple action that's how i'm going to call it let's go to basic character dot h in public u function parentheses void simple action and let's create this I'm going to go in c++ in this plus plus file void a basic character column column and i'm going to have simple action no arguments let's get curly brackets now what i'm going to do for this function is going to be an ue4 log in the debugging console so ue log then in parentheses i'm going to have log temp so temporary log with the verbosity of warning and the text is going to be let's see e was pressed and a semicolon at the end then what we can do is to copy this entire line and instead of having ie pressed we can have ie released okay but this time we will need another function so we can copy this part of the code okay simple action let's hit release then we can copy this part add release at the end and instead of e was pressed we can have e was released Let's go back in Unreal Engine 4. Let's compile it now. What's going to happen is that once I'm going to press E, a log is going to come in the output log. And we are going to be able to see here E was pressed. And once I'm going to release the E button, we are going to have here E was released. Let's play. Now, pay close attention here in the bottom left corner. I'm going to press E. You can see E was pressed. Log temp with warning. And then when I'm going to release it, Again, e was press is going to be called. That is probably because yeah, I forgot to add here simple action release. But anyway, it should work nonetheless. Because even though it wasn't this particular function, this one was still called twice. Once on press, once on released. So everything should be fine. Let's wait once again for compiling. 
press E and then release it and now we can see E was pressed and E was released. And that's everything we need to do inside Visual Studio and UE4. If you want to learn how to do the same thing but using Blueprint instead, I leave down in the description a link to Matthew Palaget's video. In case you have been wondering where I was these past two weeks and why I haven't uploaded anything, that's because I just started high school. And I wanted to take a week off to accommodate with it as much as I could. And from now on, I will try my best to provide at least one tutorial per week. Big thanks to Stefan, Guthrie, Donald Anderson, Clive75, Kama Sutra Industries, Budiman Airzone, Andrew Mills Pog, Badr Al Kaktani, Roduk, and Aaron Skinner for supporting me this month. As always, the project files will be available for patrons over Patreon. Thanks a lot for watching the video until the very end, and I'll catch you in the next one.